Just before dawn on a humid July night in 2015, a motorist came across the body of a teenager in the middle of a country highway. 19-year-old Stephen Smith, mysteriously dead just 10 miles away from Moselle, the massive hunting lodge in islands in South Carolina owned by the area's most powerful family, the Murdochs. For generations, the Murdochs controlled law and order in the South Carolina Low Country. The family wielded their power like an iron sword, but when Alex Murdoch gunned down his wife Maggie and youngest son Paul, justice finally came in the form of two life sentences. But the Murdoch saga isn't over. There's one more mystery left to solve. Let's recap. Welcome to True Crime Recaps. I'm Chris. You found the only channel where you can get all the crime in half the time. If that sounds good to you, it would mean a lot to us if you took a second to give this a like and hit subscribe so you never miss a recap. Thanks again for watching. The Murdoch saga is certainly one of the strangest stories you'll ever hear, and the Alex Murdoch guilty verdict is not the final chapter. The family name has been linked to yet another body. 19-year-old Stephen Smith. When Stephen was found dead, the Murdoch name came up more than 40 times during the initial investigation, but that was back in 2015. The Murdochs were still the county's unofficial royal family, and Stephen's case quietly went away. The murders of Maggie and Paul dragged it back into the light. As the South Carolina Law Enforcement Division, or SLED for short, was looking into the Moselle murders, they found information that made them reopen Stephen Smith's case. Those details haven't been made public, but here's what we do know. A passing driver found Stephen Smith's body on a lonely stretch of highway around 4 a.m. on July 8, 2015. Stephen was studying to be a nurse when he died. He was on his way home from night class at the community college when it appears he ran out of gas. His car was abandoned on the side of the road three miles from his body. The gas cap was open. His wallet was still in the car. Stephen lived nearby. He might have been walking home, but he didn't make it far. His body was left in the middle of the road. At first glance, it looked like a hit and run, but look a little closer and nothing fits that scenario. His clothes were clean with no broken glass or debris. His phone and keys were still in his pocket. Even his shoes were still on, although reports say they were loosely tied. And there was no broken glass, car parts, or tire marks around to show he'd been the victim of a hit and run. The initial police report clearly stated, quote, We see no evidence to suggest the victim was struck by a vehicle. His injuries were also strange. He had no broken bones and no wounds whatsoever on his torso or lower body. The only injury was to his head, and it was bad. A seven-inch hole gaped open on the right side of his forehead. His right shoulder was dislocated and bent back behind his body. He had what looked like defensive wounds on his right hand, and tox reports came back clean. He wasn't drunk or on drugs when he died. This was cold-blooded murder. At first, the police called it a shooting because of Stephen's head wound, but there was no bullet, no fragments of a bullet, no bullet shells left behind. There wasn't even any evidence to prove Stephen died where he was found. In fact, the lack of evidence appeared to be evidence in and of itself. Did someone go to a lot of trouble to cover up what happened? From the very beginning, the rumor mill churned out a terrifying story. Police got a tip about a group of guys from rich families raising hell on the highway that night after a baseball game. They passed Stevens' broke down car and turned around. According to the case file reviewed by Fitz News, when they passed Stephen again, they stuck something out the window that hit and killed him. Maybe a baseball bat. One of the guys in the car was allegedly Buster Murdoch, Stephen's high school classmate. Was the teenager the victim of a hate crime? Stephen was openly gay, which was no small thing in a small southern town in 2015. According to locals interviewed for the Netflix documentary, Murdoch Murders, A Southern Scandal, rumor has it that Buster and Stephen were more than just former classmates. Stephen told his twin sister he had a fling with one of the boys that supposedly did this. His mother, Sandy Smith, told The Guardian in 2015. 
He also told her he and the boy had a deep sea fishing trip planned for July. The Murdoch name came up early and often. Before police had even confirmed the body was Stevens, his parents got a call from Buster's uncle, Randy Murdoch, offering to help look into the death. He even offered to represent the Smith family for free. Represent them? Why would they need a lawyer? But this was the Murdochs, so Sandy told the New York Post she took him up on his offer. After all, they were the area's most powerful family, and as a grieving mother, she wanted all the help she could get. But she came to regret it. The Murdochs kept inserting themselves into the investigation. They were even at the crime scene when she visited. Randy told ABC's 2020 he knew of no connection whatsoever between the family and Stephen's death. But police records reviewed by Fitz News tell a different story. When tipsters were questioned about the Murdoch connection, they didn't want to talk on record. The case mysteriously bounced from investigator to investigator without reasons or notification. Sandy told Fitz News it would repeatedly get to a certain point, then the assigned investigator would bow out. As a result, Sandy believes a lot of the evidence mysteriously went missing. The DNA from Stephen's fingernails, the clothes he was wearing, even the rape kit they allegedly did. No one from the Murdoch family was questioned at the time. By 2016, the case was cold. And the most basic question, what killed Stephen, is still a mystery. The pathologist says it wasn't a shooting, it was a hit and run. But she admitted she was basing that on the fact that he was found in the road. The death certificate says Stephen died from blunt force trauma. His eye socket was crushed, his forehead had deep gashes, and the back of his skull was shattered. But with zero evidence at the scene to suggest a car was involved, what happened? What do you think? And that's your recap. Thanks for hanging out with us today. If you like getting all the crime in half the time, go ahead and tap that subscribe button and the bell so you never miss a story. We're here Wednesdays, Saturdays, and Sundays, but don't go away. Catch up on more recaps right here, right now. Until next time, take care.